In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. La paz sea con todos ustedes. Bienvenidos todos. Welcome, everyone. Such a joy to have you gathered here at the beautiful cathedral of the Diocese of El Paso on this day in which God is working among us and revealing that work in a special way. I want to welcome everyone who has gathered here, uh, certainly uh, the family of the man whom God has chosen for the order of the episcopacy, uh, gathered from all around the world, including the Philippines. We're so uh, honored by your presence. Uh, we, we welcome all of the bishops who have joined us today, bishops, archbishops, and among them, one who represents for us a, a person so dear to us. Our apostolic nuncio is here today representing Pope Francis. Welcome, Archbishop Pierre. We welcome all civic leaders, our interfaith uh, representatives. Thank you for being part of this special day for the life of our community, uh, representatives, and, and many of our religious women, and uh, not to mention our, our priests and deacons who are gathered here. Uh, what a beautiful array among us. I think the kingdom of heaven might look like this. And of course, we're, we're all here to pray for uh, the man who has been chosen for Father Tony Celino, the bishop-elect, uh, we raise up our, our hearts, our voices to God on your behalf today, knowing that he will make effective what he has uh, called you to. Uh, brothers and sisters, I, I wanted to mention also all of those who are watching on television. It's very grateful to KBIA and, and those online around the world. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, this is a Friday in Lent, you may have noticed, but here it's a celebration. Here we have a reason to rejoice, to recognize that even as we recall Christ's suffering, we are celebrating, estamos celebrando su victoria en este momento, vamos celebrar, ¿eh? y vamos recordar que es para nosotros, para nuestra salvación, para perdonar nuestros pecados que ha venido. Let us call to mind our sin. Señor Todopoderoso, tenga misericordia de nosotros, perdone nuestros pecados y nos lleve a la vida eterna.
God, eternal shepherd, who, governing your flock with watchful care, choose to join Anthony, your servant and priest, to the college of bishops this day. Grant, we pray, that by his holiness of life he may everywhere prove to be a true witness to Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Pagbasa mula sa aklat ni Propeta Jeremias. Sinabi sa akin ng Panginoon, Pinili kita bago kay paglihi upang maging propeta sa lahat ng bansa. Sinabi ko naman, Panginoon, hindi po ako marunong magsalita. Bata pa po ako. Subalit, sinabi niya sa akin, Huwag mong sabihing bata ka. Sinusugo kita kaya't humayo ka. Itahayag mo sa lahat ang aking iuutos sa iyo. Huwag mo silang katakutan pagkat ako'y sasa iyo at iingatan kita. Ako ang Panginoon ang nagsasabi nito. Pagkatapos, iniunat ng Panginoon ang kanyang bisig. Hinipo ang mga labi ko at sinabi, Hayan! Ibibigay ko sa inyo ang dapat mong sabihin. Ang salita ng Diyos, salamat sa Diyos.
de la segunda lectura del apóstol San Pablo a Timoteo. Querido hermano, te recomiendo que avives el don de Dios que recibiste cuando te impuse las manos, porque el Señor no nos ha dado un espíritu de temor, sino de fortaleza, de amor y de moderación. No te avergüences, pues, de dar testimonio de nuestro Señor, ni te avergüences de mí, que estoy preso por su causa. Al contrario, comparte conmigo los sufrimientos por la predicación del Evangelio, sostenido por la fuerza de Dios. Él nos ha salvado y nos ha llamado a llevar una vida santa, no por nuestros méritos, sino por su propia determinación y por la gracia que se nos ha sido dado en Cristo Jesús desde toda la eternidad. Esta gracia es la que se ha manifestado ahora con el advenimiento de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo, quien ha destruido la muerte e irradiado la vida y la inmortalidad por medio del Evangelio, del que he sido nombrado predicador, apóstol y maestro. Por este motivo soporto esta prisión, pero no me da vergüenza, porque sé en quién he puesto mi confianza y estoy seguro de que Él con su poder cuidará hasta el último día lo que me ha encomendado. Conforma tu predicación a la sólida doctrina que recibiste de mí acerca de la fe y el amor que tienen su fundamento en Cristo Jesús. Guarda este tesoro con la ayuda del Espíritu Santo que habita en nosotros. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Almighty God, be in your hearts and on your lips that you may proclaim this gospel worthily and well. In the nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amen.
Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned his disciples and said to them, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Santo Fill our hearts with your love Most Reverend Father, the Holy Catholic Church, our Mother, asks you to ordain this priest, Anthony Serdan Celino, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Reverendissimo Padre, 
la Santa Madre Iglesia Católica pide que ordenes obispo al presbítero Anthony Serdan Celino. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Your Excellency, Archbishop Garcia Sile, Metropolitan Archbishop of San Antonio, Bishop Seitz, all my brother bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and members of the faithful, dear friends. Today is an historic day for the Diocese of El Paso, as an auxiliary bishop is installed for the first time. What a responsibility you have. Eh? <laughs> I'm happy to be present with you and to manifest the Holy Father's care for this local church, where the mission of the gospel carried out amidst me many complexities and challenges is so vital to the future of this region and of this country. I share the confidence of Pope Francis and Bishop Seitz in entrusting this new responsibility to Bishop-elect Celino, both because of his extensive experience in ministry and because of the pastoral heart which motivates him, Bishop-elect Celino. Last month, when your appointment was announced, you spoke about how your priestly ministry has been informed by the many cultures that enrich this diocese, and how you have learned to speak, as Pope Francis calls it, the language of the culture of encounter. This is so important. I was with the Holy Father when uh, he visited Ciudad Juarez in 2016, and I greet the Bishop of Ciudad Juarez. I don't know where he is. Here he is. He's a good <laughs> visitor, a neighbor, a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. In 2016, and at that time, he said, I quote, anything we can do to foster dialogue, encounter, and the search for better alternatives and opportunities is already an accomplishment to be valued and highlighted. Whether you are speaking Spanish or English or Tagalog, the language that everyone understands is the language of encounter. During your last 25 years of priestly ministry, you have learned to speak this language. In the parishes you have served, you have helped the faithful enc encounter Christ in the word of God in the sacraments. In your application of canon law, you have kept before your eyes the salvation of souls, which is the supreme law of the church. In your service of the administration of the diocese, you have collaborated with Bishop Seid in his pastoral governance of the priests and people. In all these ministries, your own daily encounter with Christ in prayer has given you the strength and wisdom to work with others. The grace of Episcopal consecration, which you will receive at this Mass, will enrich you even more to be a father, a brother, and a servant to all in need. Bishop Elect Celino, know that you are accompanied by the prayers of many as you take this next step in your ministry. Congratulations and blessings to you. And now, with much joy, I will now re read the papal decree appointing you as Auxiliary Bishop of El Paso. It will be read in English. Uh, just a moment. Wait. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it is a translation. It will be shown to you, you know, in the bulla, to you in Latin. So, but you will see it with your eyes. 
Francis, Bishop, servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Antoni Celino, from the clergy of El Paso and until now, judicial vicar there as well as pastor of St. Raphael Parish in El Paso, appointed auxiliary of the same diocese and elected tutelar bishop of Maronana. Greetings and apostolic blessing. Indeed, the spirit of the Lord is upon us, for we have been anointed to bring glad tidings to the poor and sent to proclaim liberty to captives as well as recovery to, of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord, especially by encouraging the process of integration of the most vulnerable refugees and in assuring assistance and acceptance to migrants. Moved by such an urgent baptismal mission, we turn our attentions to the flock of El Paso, whose chief shepherd, our venerable brother, Mark Joseph Seitz, not long ago requested assistance in governing diocesan life, accordingly giving special attention to the responsibilities carried out by you and up to now your steadfast pastoral ministry and fidelity toward the gospel, we judge that you are entirely suitable to fulfill episcopal duties. Therefore, Upon consultation with the Dicastery for Bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic authority, we appoint you titular Bishop of Maronana and, at the same time, name you Auxiliary of the Diocese of El Paso, conferring upon you the due rights and imposing the relative obligations which are connected to this mandate. You may receive Episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome, the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in accordance with the norms of ecclesiastical law. Finally, beloved son, as we exhort you to zealously work in harmony with the ordinary of this local church, we beseech Almighty God, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of St. Patrick, that you may lead the faithful of that community by the word of Christ and by active charity. Given at Rome, at St. John Lateran, on the eighth day of February, in the year of the Lord, 2023, the 10th of our pontificate, and it is signed, Pope Francis.
Ask any bishop the story of the day he learned that he had been named a bishop by the Holy Father, and they will have a good story to tell about that day filled with a plethora of emotions, a day he will never forget. It comes like a shot out of the blue, a complete shock and a surprise. You agree, brothers? (laughs) Any priest knows it could happen few ever think it will happen to them. For those who are unaware of the process of choosing a bishop, you might be surprised to know that it is completely different from the selection uh, process for another, for a secular job. Priests do not apply for bishop. (laughs) They do not sit in an interview and explain to the panel why they are the perfect choice. In fact, if a priest were to do that, he would be immediately disqualified. (laughs) Even though Paul counsels the young Timothy, whoever aspires to the office of bishop desires a noble task, what Paul should have gone on to say is that whoever aspires to this office might also be a little bit crazy. It is in so many ways a heavy burden. The church also wants to avoid ordaining people who are angling for power or privilege. Para la selección de un obispo se lleva a cabo un proceso rigoroso que busca información sobre un candidato entre muchas personas, clérigos, religiosos y laicos, Los invitados a responder cuestionarios sobre el candidato potencial se mantienen en secreto máximo. No pueden decírselo a nadie, nunca. Esto protege la franqueza de su testimonio o cualquier intento de influir el proceso. So you can see why that moment comes as such a huge surprise. I'll let the bishop-elect tell you his own story another time. He has told me that he can identify with that day in 2010 when the bishop of Dallas called me into his office, shaking my hand as I entered and saying cryptically, I am about to turn your life upside down. (laughs) And then he did. He went on to inform me that the Holy Father had named me an auxiliary bishop of Dallas. In the midst of the fog that that life-changing declaration brought upon me, one of the first thoughts that passed through my mind was that my days as a parish priest were coming to an end. I suspect this was one of the first thoughts that entered your mind, Father Tony, as well. Cuando un joven se compromete al sacerdocio y su compromiso es confirmado por la iglesia, Sabe que está dando su vida, que le pertenece a Cristo. Estará al servicio de la iglesia y de las personas a quienes está llamado a amar. Pero el sacerdote puede ser disculpado si a veces comienza a pensar que tiene una idea bastante buena de lo que puede estar por venir. Father Tony had served as a priest for 25 years. Much of this time he served in administrative roles in the diocese, and he was very happy to get back to 
the ministry that is the meat and potatoes of any diocesan priest's vocation, parish ministry. For the last seven years, he has been serving at St. Raphael, and he has loved it. He and the parish community and school have been making progress, and great plans have been made for the future. But as has become clear, sometimes the Lord has other plans. When the discernment process of the church leads to a person being chosen for this office by the vicar of Christ, the Pope, it is about as clear a sign as you will ever have in this world that God is at work, the God of surprises. Well, Father Tony, I know why you chose that first reading from Jeremiah where he tells the Lord that he is too young. (laughs) It's true that compared to me (laughs) and some of my brother bishops, you are young. (laughs) Of course, the youth here are saying, 50? He's ancient. (laughs) The truth is that no one feels old enough for the task that lies before you. Trust in the Lord's response to Jeremiah. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. When you don't have the words... Trust the Lord to place them within your mouth. You are about to be ordained to the fullness of the ministerial priesthood of the sac- in the sacrament of holy orders. Remember that this is no mere arbitrary ritual that we celebrate here today. These ancient rites are given to us by God to effect and accomplish the work he has chosen you to do by the laying on of our hands and the prayer that follows, along with the anointing with the oil of chrism, God will be at work conforming you to Christ for a sharing in his high priesthood. Como nos recuerda la constitución de la iglesia Lumen Gentium, los obispos, como vicarios y embajadores de Cristo, gobiernan las iglesias particulares que se les han confiado por su consejo, exhortaciones, ejemplo, e incluso por su autoridad y poder sagrado, que de hecho usan solo para la edificación de su rebaño en verdad y en verdad santidad, recordando que él es el mayor que mayor debe llegar a ser como el menor y él que es el principal debe llegar a ser el siervo. I am sure that in this passage you heard an echo of Jesus' words to his disciples in the gospel we just heard, whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Now here, Bishop-elect Tony, is where we find that the good news is really good news. Good news for you and for the entire church. As a bishop, you will soon no longer have the role of being a parish pastor. But you will still be a pastor. Now on a broader plane, you will be a servant who is a model and a ready help, a brother, a guide, and a support to the priests and deacons an inspiration to the young considering a vocation, a blessing to all the people you serve. 
incluso más allá de la diócesis, los dones que Dios te ha otorgado fortalecerán la vida de la iglesia y la harán parecer, parecerse más a Cristo, la cabeza. En este nuevo ministerio encontrarás ciertamente pruebas y sacrificios que te esperan. Pero con la ayuda de Dios también tendrás alegrías y consuelos que van más allá de lo, de lo que puedas imaginar mientras caminas y guías a las personas confiadas a, a tu cuidado. So, Tony, stir into a flame the gift of God that you will receive through our hands, a gift passed on to you from the apostles, which they received from Christ himself through the Holy Spirit. God has called you. He will provide whatever you need. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers decrees that the one to be ordained bishop should be questioned in the presence of the people concerning his resolve to guard the faith and to discharge his office. Therefore, dear brother, do you resolve to carry out until death with the grace of the Holy Spirit the office entrusted to us by the apostles and to be passed on to you through the laying on of our hands. I am. Do you resolve to proclaim the gospel of Christ faithfully and unfailingly? I am. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith pure and entire according to, to the tradition preserved always and everywhere in the church from the time of the apostles? I am. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in her unity with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I am. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter. I am. Do you resolve, as a devoted father, to encourage the holy people of God and to guide them in the way of salvation together with the priests and deacons, your fellow ministers? I am. Do you resolve, for the sake of the Lord's name, to reach out in kindness and mercy to the poor, to strangers, and to all those in need. I am. Do you resolve, as a good shepherd, to seek out the sheep who stray and to gather them into the Lord's flock? I am. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for his holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I am. I am with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Amen. Pónganse de pie, por favor. Oremos, hermanos, para que en bien de la Santa Iglesia, 
El Dios de todo poder y bondad derrame sobre este elegido suyo la abundancia de su gracia. Nos ponemos de rodillas. Sing 
Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and as you raise the horn of priestly grace over this your servant, pour out upon him the power of your blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be. It is you who established order in your church through your gracious word, who from the beginning predestined a righteous people born of Abraham, who instituted rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministry, who from the beginning of the world have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now pour forth upon this chosen one the power that is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and whom he gave to the holy apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary to your glory and unfailing praise of your name. Padre Santo, tú que conoces los corazones, concede a este servidor tuyo, a quien elegiste para el episcopado, que sea un buen pastor de tu santa grey y ejercite ante ti el sumo sacerdocio, sirviéndote sin tacha día y noche, que atraiga su, tu favor sobre tu pueblo y ofrezca los dones de tu santa iglesia, que por la fuerza del Espíritu que recibe como sumo sacerdote y según tu mandato, tenga el poder de perdonar pecados. Que distribuya a los ministerios y los oficios según tu voluntad y desate todo vínculo conforme al poder que diste a los apóstoles. May he be pleasing to you in meekness and purity of heart, offering a sweet fragrance to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, both now and forever and ever. May God, who has made you a share in the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing.
receive this, the gospel, and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Amen. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorn it with the undefiled faith. Preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Recibe la mitra. Brille en ti el resplandor de la santidad para que cuando aparezca el príncipe de la, los pastores merezcas recibir la corona de gloria que no se marchita. Receive the crozier, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God.
Oren, hermanos, para que este sacrificio mío y de ustedes sea agradable a Dios, Padre Todopoderoso. Acepta, Señor, con agrado la ofrenda que te presentamos por tu iglesia y por tu siervo Antonio Obispo, y ya que le, le, le has otorgado la plenitud del sacerdocio, concédele la abundancia de las virtudes apostólicas para el bien de tu rey, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. El Señor esté con ustedes. Y con tu Levantemos el corazón. Lo tenemos levantado hacia el Señor. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. En verdad es justo y necesario, es nuestro deber y salvación darte gracias siempre en todo lugar, Señor Padre Santo, Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, ya que por la unción del Espíritu Santo con Constituiste a tu unigénito pontífice de la alianza nueva y eterna, y en tu designio salvífico has querido que su sacerdocio único se perpetuara en la iglesia. En efecto, Cristo no solo confiere la dignidad del sacerdocio real a todo su pueblo santo, sino que con especial predilección elige a algunos de entre los hermanos mediante la imposición de las manos los hace partícipes de su ministerio salvación, a fin de que renueven en su nombre el sacrificio redentor, preparen para tus hijos al banquete pascual, fomenten la caridad en tu pueblo santo, lo alimenten con la palabra y lo fortifiquen con los sacramentos y consagrando su vida a ti y a la salvación de sus hermanos se esfuercen por reproducir en sí mismos la imagen de Cristo y te den un constante testimonio de fidelidad y de amor. Por eso, Señor, con todos los ángeles y los santos, 
de alabamos, cantando llenos de alegría. Holy, holy, holy Lord, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Tu el que viene en el nombre del Señor, Hosanna en el cielo, Hosanna. Hosanna en el cielo, Hosanna en el cielo, Sana en el cielo, oh sana. Sana en el cielo, sana en el cielo, sana en el cielo, oh sana. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come, until you come again. Clamos du muerte, Señor, proclamamos tu resurrección. Ven, Señor, ven, Señor, ven, Señor Jesús. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and St. Pedro de Jesus Maldonado, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession. In your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and your servant Anthony, who has been ordained today as a shepherd for the church, with the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, Teodolo, Mines, Juan, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and ever. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad. Tú que vives en renas por los siglos de los siglos. La paz del Señor sea siempre con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu.
ten piedad, ten piedad de nosotros. Oh God, take away the sins of the world. Mercy and mercy, mercy. el pecado del mundo piedad ten piedad ten piedad de nosotros you take away the sins of the world mercy and mercy Grant us peace, grant us peace, O Lamb of God. Grant us His blood, grant us peace. Grant Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By the power of the sacrament, O Lord, increase the gifts of your grace in Anthony, your servant and bishop, that he may serve you worthily in the pastoral ministry and receive the eternal rewards of a faithful steward through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Well, would you like to hear from the new Bishop Anthony Salino, or would you rather wait till next week? I think that means now. (laughs) 
Ang puso ko ay nagpupuri. Mi alma proclama. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. Today, I feel the same way as our blessed mother felt as she proclaimed her Magnificat. I am thankful to Almighty God for the blessing of this ministry granted to me. I have never felt the Spirit of God working on and guiding me more than I do today. I am grateful to the Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray that the healing Spirit of God will be with him to comfort him and to restore his strength to continue his ministry of shepherding the entire church. We are very honored by the presence of the papal nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre. Thank you for being with us and for, being, and for bringing the blessing of the Holy Father to our community. Gracias. And we are honored by the presence of many bishops and archbishops from out of town. Thank you for joining us for this wonderful location for our church. I am particularly grateful to Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra from San Antonio. We know that El Paso is near and dear to your heart, especially because you have family here. Monsignor, gracias. Mm -hmm. And to Bishop John Stowe from Lexington. Do I really have to say Lexington? <laughs> Can we also say that he's from El Paso? <laughs> Bishop John, welcome back. You have been a great friend to me and to many, many here in El Paso. Thank you to the people of the Diocese of El Paso, to all of you, to my brother priest, I am privileged to be part of this presbyterate. To my sisters and brothers in the consecrated life and societies of apostolic life, distinguished members and representatives of our interfaith community here in El Paso, public officials, and most especially to our very own Bishop, Bishop Mark, not only for the faith you have placed in me as your collaborator in ministry, but for your pastoral leadership in our community. Thank you. I want to express my deep gratitude to the ordination committee who worked tirelessly to put the details of this momentous occasion together your care and attention to every detail did not go unnoticed. Our guests are so happy and feel so welcome in our beautiful city. And there's more. There's going to be a reception afterwards at the gym. So let us all go there afterwards. Thank you all for making this celebration a warm hospitality from El Paso. I would especially thank my family who was I have a loving and loyal, caring family who is always there for me, my family here in El Paso, and those who traveled from all over the country and the world to be with me and to accompany me today. I am truly grateful. I would not be here today without all of you, and especially to my siblings. I know that you will keep me grounded. <laughs> and that I will always be your little brother. <laughs> to mommy and daddy, who are surely smiling at us from heaven and so proud to see us all here today. I would like to acknowledge everyone who is watching us on KVIA or on the diocesan social media. 
especially people watching from the Philippines, including my family and relatives in Anda, who are so excited for this event. It is such a blessing for our family and the people in the, Phil in the Philippines. What a joy that we can celebrate as one, even though we are thousands of miles away. Abaw salamat kumuyong amin. Me gustaría terminar estas palabras invocando la intercesión de nuestra Santísima Madre de Guadalupe. Con mi mirada puesta en esta nueva encomienda, me reconfortan las mismas palabras que María Santísima dirigió a Juan Diego. Es nada lo que te asusta y aflige. No se turbe tu corazón. No temas ni otra alguna enfermedad y angustia. No estoy yo aquí, que soy tu madre. No estás bajo mi sombra. No soy yo tu salud. No estás por ventura en mi regazo. ¿Qué más has menester? Santa María de Guadalupe, ruega por, por nosotros. nosotros. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Before we conclude, and we will conclude even earlier because our new auxiliary bishop, Anthony, did part of my job. So thank you very much and thanking so many people. Uh, but um, I don't want to conclude without uh, introducing you to the various bishops who are here. I'm sure you've been wondering who's that and who's that. So where's my book? So I don't miss anybody. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why you didn't see too many deacons out here, they, they're not boycotting or anything. Um, uh, they're, they're here. They're here. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> we're, we're very grateful to their ministry, which is so generous and uh, so helpful in the life of the church. Uh, of course, our seminarians that were able to come home from school uh, are here serving today. We're so uh, delighted and proud of them. Um, so let me go ahead and introduce the, the bishops who are here. Many you'll recognize already, but uh, Archbishop Gustavo, uh, we're so honored to have you here from San Antonio. Uh, Bishop John, as, as we've already said, um, uh, es su casa aquí en el paso, Señor. Todavía. Um, we also have another Archbishop, Archbishop John Wester. Uh, Bish Archbishop John, would you stand up, please? And so, well, it's from the Archdiocese of Santa Fe. Um, también nuestro hermano de nuestra hermana Ciudad y Diócesis, eh, el Obispo de Ciudad Juárez. Obispo uh, Jose Guadalupe Torres Campos. Gracias, Señor. And I think just to speed this, well, no, I, you need to stand up. They need to see you. Um, Bishop John Eifert from Covington. Bishop Michael Olson from Fort Worth. Bishop Ron Hicks from Joliet, Illinois. Bishop James Tamayo from Laredo. Bishop Peter Baldequino from Las Cruces, nuestro, nuestro vecino. Bishop Oscar Solis of Salt Lake City. Bishop Michael Sis from San Angelo. <laughs> Bishop Alberto Rojas, Bishop of San Bernardino in California. <laughs> Bishop Mario Aviles, Auxiliary Bishop of Brownsville. <laughs> Bishop Kevin Birmingham, Auxiliary of Chicago. 
Bishop Gregory Kelly, Auxiliary of Dallas. Bishop Italo Delorio, Deloro, uh, Auxiliary of Galveston, Houston. Bishop Michael Bolette from San Antonio, Auxiliary. Bishop Gary Yannick, also Auxiliary of San Antonio. Bishop Eduardo Nevarez, Auxiliary of Phoenix. This one doesn't need any introduction, but we are just so proud to have him with us today. Uh, the, my predecessor is, a bishop, is Bishop of El Paso, Armando Ochoa. And Bishop Gerald Kikanis, Emeritus of Tucson. And too many other priests and others to, to mention, but we're so grateful to have you all. Thank you. You honor us to be here today. We can never thank everyone, but I can't let us conclude without thanking the folks who helped us so much, as they always do, to raise our hearts and minds to God, our spectacular choir, under the direction of Peter Kolar. So if you think this liturgy took a little while, well, it was time well spent, right? And it's preparation for the Easter Vigil, so it'll, it'll seem like nothing. Pónganse de pie, por favor. We've introduced him several times. Pónganse de pie. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bow down your heads for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you as he has willed to set you as high priest over his people. So may he make you happy in this present life and grant you a share in the happiness that is eternal. Amen. Que el Señor te conceda por muchos años gobernar felizmente con su providencia y bajo tu cuidado al, claro, al clero y al pueblo que ha querido reunir en torno tuyo. Amen. Freed from adversity, that may, may you obey God's commandments, submitting in faith to your ministry. May you abound in all that is good, so that you may enjoy peace and tranquility in the present age, and with you be found worthy to share the company of the citizens of eternity. Amen. Y a todos ustedes que están aquí presentes, los bendiga Dios Todopoderoso, Padre, Hijo, Espíritu Santo. La misa está terminada, podemos ir en la paz de Cristo. Demos gracias a Dios. Va a caminar. Is he going to walk? Is he going to walk?
Congratulations, Jack. Okay, bye. 